Find and classify the stationary point on the curve y is equal to 4x to the 5 minus 5x to the 4 using the second, second derivative test. Okay, so we've got y is equal to 4x to the 5 minus 5x to the 4. Just before we actually do it, let's have a look what that curve looks like. So this GeoGebra app I will connect to the notes of the video. So here is the curve that we are considering. And like before, if we have the tangent at that point zero zero, we will get a stationary point, a turning point, and we'll get another one here at uh, one minus one. So what we need to do is to uh, find the derivative and put it equal to zero and, and the algebra will give me those two points. So, if we're finding dy by dx, so if we differentiate, if we've got y is equal to a to the x, dy by dx is nax to the n minus one. I bring the power down in front, write down ax and reduce the power by one of, on the x. So applying that to each term, we're going to get 4 times 5, which is 20x to the 4, minus 20x cubed. If we put dy by dx is equal to 0, then we put 20x to the 4, minus 20x cubed, equal to 0. And now we see there's a common factor of 20x cubed, and we're left with x minus 1 is equal to 0. So either 20x cubed is equal to 0, so if that's true then x must be equal to 0, which is good because that ties up with the graph, or x minus 1 is equal to 0, which gives me x is equal to 1. Right, now we've got to sort of think about the second derivative test. So if we uh, click here to see the first derivative, which is that one there, we will see... that the, at this particular point where the derivative is equal to zero, which gives the, the point, that the tangent, if we draw the gradient of the gradient, that's actually equal to zero. And at this particular point, we will see that the gradient of the gradient is positive. You, we can actually see the second derivative here, the blue one. You can see the second derivative will be zero at this particular point and that the gradient, the gradient where it's gone off the scale would be up here somewhere, that it, this would also give a positive value for uh, the second derivative. So this one is good, we can classify this one using the second derivative test, but this one causes a problem because according to the uh, second derivative test, if dy by, d d dy by dx is equal to zero and that the second derivative is negative, we have a maximum point. We don't have that case in this case. If we have uh, dy by dx is equal to zero and the second derivative is positive, then we have a minimum, minimum point, which is this one. However, we do have a case where dy by dx is equal to zero and the second derivative is equal to zero. Therefore, you cannot use the second derivative test to determine whether this is a maximum or minimum because if it is equal to zero, it could be a maximum or a minimum. So that's why we have done the first derivative test first. So let's now look at that algebraically. So there's a diagram of that. Pause the video there if you want to quickly look at the, what the test actually says. So finding the second derivative test. Okay, so you'd have, you've got dy by dx is uh, 20x to the 4 minus 20x cubed. To find the second derivative, you differentiate again, so that's 4 times 20. That's 8x, and reduce the power by 1, which is 3. Same here, you're going to get 60x squared. When x is 0, if you put x is 0 in the second derivative, very easily you can see that you're actually going to get 0. And therefore, we note here, we cannot determine... Therefore, we need to check using the first derivative test. So you have to revert back to this table and use the first derivative. Make sure we're using the first derivative, dy by dx, this one here, 20x4 and 20x cubed when you're doing this table. So we've got the 
point x is zero, equal to zero, less than zero, uh, just less than zero and just greater than zero, we find dy by dx and y. We know that x is equal to zero, the gradient was zero, and therefore we get a horizontal straight line. If we take a point just less than zero, minus point one, put it into here, we're going to get a positive value, which means that the slope goes this way. And then if we take a point just after, okay, this is a negative value, it'll give you a negative value, and therefore the slope would do this way. You have to do this test if this fails here. All right, because it could be a maximum, it could be a minimum. Remember, we we're trying to do this algebraically. So the conclusion is that x is equal to zero is, is a maximum point. x is equal to zero is a maximum point. So we've got a maximum point here. Right, to go do the other one, when x is equal to one, again, we go back to the second uh, derivative, so we're going to back to use this one. So you have to make sure you're using the right one each time. So it's 80 times 1 cubed minus 60 times 1 squared, with 60, 80 minus 60, which is going to be 20, which is greater than 0. That means x is a x is equal to 1 is a minimum point. Okay, so just repeat what we've done there. We checked x is equal to zero in the second derivative we got zero we cannot use it we have to go back and use the first derivative test make sure you put it in the first derivative and then determine that it's a maximum point but for x is equal to one we get a positive result which means from the second derivative which we mean it is a minimum point right find the y coordinates so we use y for that for x uh, to the power of 5 minus 5x to the 4. So when x is equal to 0, we get y is equal to 4 times 0 to the power of 5, 5 times 0 to the power of 4, which gives me 0. It gives me the point 0, 0. And so when x is equal to 1, y will be equal to 4 times 1 to the 5 minus 5 times 1 to the 4. So it's 4 minus 5, which is minus 1. The conclusion, 0, 0 is a maximum point. And 1 minus 1 is a minimum point. And we could just look at this again. We can, uh, you can see here is the maximum point at 0, 0. And here is the minimum point at 1 minus 1. So this has been a video to show you how to use the second derivative test, including a case where you cat does not work and you have to go back and use the first derivative test. I hope you understood. And I thank you very much for watching.